We had probably uh, 400 plus murders. Uh, the police department was in absolute shambles because of a uh, combination of uh, corruption, uh, civil rights violations, and just overall ineffectiveness. Uh, President Clinton had just taken office and there was, a, there was some optimism that his administration would focus more on urban communities. Uh, invest in cities so and there was a bit of a, a youth movement uh, in the election of 1994 uh, but overall the city needed a shot in the arm it needed a dose of I think energy uh, the uh, city was also coming out of the sort of recession of the late 80s and the early 90s so the unemployment rate was probably eight and a half to nine percent we had about uh, 35,000 plus abandoned housing units that was a byproduct of the shrinkage of the city uh, the flight out of the city prompted a little somewhat by crime and prompted also by the downturn in the in the sort of petroleum economy uh, which caused people to leave because the jobs weren't there the search committee didn't pick Chief Pennington. This is an interesting story. Uh, we had a national search. We used uh, the Police Executive Research Forum. We also used the International Association of Chiefs of Police. Uh, and they selected uh, a short list of approximately eight to ten candidates. And myself, uh, the two transition team directors, and Marlon Gussman, who had selected as CAO, interviewed all of those candidates and I remember after I did the interviews I was thoroughly unimpressed and very disappointed. I, I, I got a call from uh, a colleague of mine from Washington DC who said there's a assistant chief here in Washington who's very interested in your job. Uh, in all truth and in all fact he was he did not apply he did not apply because he thought he was going to get the police chief job in Cleveland he didn't get it they went to a local position I really think you ought to talk to him I think with Chief Pennington we initially decided that we were going to have to attack uh, the entire situation in phases and the, because there were corruption uh, investigations underway uh, by the FBI and by the United States Attorney into the New Orleans Police Department. One of the things that helped us a lot is that since Chief Pennington was from Washington, he had relationships and it was a comfort level between him and federal law enforcement agencies. And so one of the first things we were able to do is build a working relationship with federal law enforcement. Uh, Attorney General Reno, President Clinton had placed the imprimatur and the power, the FBI, the U.S. Attorney, the ATF, and the DEA on the side of trying to do something about urban crime. What happened in the police department got most of the headlines, but what happened in the recreation department, what happened with youth programs, was as important as what we did with police. Uh, we put a curfew in effect, we expanded summer jobs, we put a, a large number, we opened 40 to 45 free camps the first summer uh, that we were in office. These things were as important because it, we believe you had to say no and say yes. Tell kids, say no, and then tell kids, here's something to say yes to. I had a, I had a distinct advantage uh, because I was the first mayor, probably since Mayor Morrison, to come directly from the legislature to the mayor's office. And I was also in the Senate. So we decided, and I started going to Baton Rouge every Tuesday, bar none, and on that Tuesday I'd hold a luncheon meeting with the Orleans delegation. Uh, we would structure an agenda where we would discuss things, we'd get feedback, sometimes it was an open agenda, sometimes I brought the police chief, I brought the DA, I brought the school superintendent, I brought university presidents. I created a sort of a forum and a facilitation for people with interest before the legislature that affected the city to talk to legislators. We were committed to improving things operationally. One of the things we felt we needed to do when we first got there is clean up the facility. That was very, very directed and very, very, very focused to, sh to show people not only were we talking change, you know, but what we were, that we were doing change uh, uh, in a very visible way. Now, I should mention that one of the things we did when, during the transition is we hired uh, 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 Pete Marwin, K KPMG Pete Marwin, 
Uh, and they did a bit of an operational analysis of the mayor's office and gave us a new organizational chart. And we created new positions. We created new positions like the, the Commission of Criminal Justice. We created uh, an Office of uh, Environmental Affairs. We added some things. We consolidated some things. We took a, that's where sometimes a, a business uh, approach can be helpful in terms of thinking and planning and analyzing. And we did that, and it was helpful because we basically, uh, you know, chucked the mayor's organizational chart as it had existed and created a new one. And we did it in the transition because I wanted to hire in accordance with the new positions. By our count, Davis sustains four blows to the head. His head also appears to hit the wall. It's disheartening to read uh, New Orleans as being, quote, the murder capital of the United States. After we fixed that. It's disheartening to see uh, and, and the uh, number of uh, police brutality, official misconduct cases that seem to be cropping back up. It sounds like the department as we found it, not the department as we left it. The bottom line is that the next mayor is going to have to, in effect, start over uh, with a rebuilding. And, you know, I think. Uh, my experiences with it and my, my counsel to it is that it, it has to be done and the next mayor should focus on it from day one. Uh, but you've got to build a strong community coalition around it. We began late in my term to think about how the mayor could be engaged in education. One of the surprising things was that there was a large segment of the community that notwithstanding the critical importance of schools and youth and education on the economic future of the city, who felt like the mayor should really not be involved. Uh, what has evolved as a result thereof is the state being involved. And there are supporters of that, there are detractors to that, and you know, the, the supporters support perhaps the ideas being undertaken. The detractors feel like it's in derogation and, a, and an erosion of local control. Mm -hmm. I always thought that the mayor's involvement, uh, if you look at the successes in some other communities, would have been a better approach than uh, uh, not doing a thing uh, and then watching the state come in and create the multiple school district system that you have today. But I think in, in, in earnest, beginning with Mayor Landrew, and I think continuing through my time, uh, the mayor played an institutional role as a convener of the disparate groups in the city in trying to forge coalitions around large issues and trying to find ways in which the city could advance. That I thought it was a terrible mistake right after Katrina. Uh, for uh, a group of quote, quote business people and leaders to surface a plan which uh, suggested that the size of the city be shrunk. Uh, a tragedy is not the time to start doing, you, you, don't, you shouldn't see tragedies as opportunities. What it conjured up in people's minds is that their homes are going to be bulldozed, they get no compensation, their belongings would be destroyed. That to me was the a little bit of the reason combined with how the evacuation was carried out for a whole lot of the racial misunderstanding, the racial distrust, and the racial tensions. And what it did, it created a climate where everyone distrusted everyone else's agenda. Uh, and the, the, the next mayor, I believe, is going to have to embrace um, a recovery plan and a rebuilding plan for all. In my time and in my administration, uh, and I think the same may be true for Mayor Bartholomew and my father and, and Moon Landry, notwithstanding what people read in the paper, I think there was an earnest effort to try to forge some consensus where it could be forged around difficult issues, big projects, large initiatives. Uh, uh, and I think that that's something that somebody's got to work at, but it's got, there's got to be a, a, a focus and a compass of fairness uh, and the idea that uh, in order for the city to progress, you know, all communities have to be allowed to, to, to pursue uh, their potential. Stamina.
stamina and energy, patience and judgment. Uh, a real love of people and a willingness to engage. People want to engage in this town. They want to talk. They want to have a conversation. They want to be active. They want to be involved. You know, we like uh, a little controversy. You know, it's a role I relished. It's a role I thought that was incredibly important uh, myself. You know, New Orleans had three mayors that were president of the United States Conference of Mayors. Right. We are the only city, we had four. T. Sims Walmsley. Oh, really? Who know. was mayor in the 30s, was president of the Conference of Mayors. Huh. Moon Landrieu was president. Right. Uh, my father was president and I was president. Uh -huh. Mayor Morrison was president of the American Municipal Association in the 40s, I think in the early 50s, and Mayor Bartholomew was president of the National League of Cities huh. in the early 90s. What am I saying? The mayor of New Orleans is a very important national figure, but the mayor has to engage nationally be a part of the discussions with colleagues and mayors nationally uh, and not be off on the side, uh, not be uh, uh, traveling for no purpose. Right. The other thing I believe is that uh, some exposure and experience to politics and government uh, is, uh, is uh, very important. And I think, uh, uh, you know, an advantage and I think that there's been a little bit of this idea that somebody could come in on their high horse and save the day. You know, some, uh, a quote, business person or someone outside the system. Well, it's like taking someone who may have been a great major league pitcher and saying, you know, you got a great arm, son. I'm going to make you a quarterback in the NFL. If your mayor uh, gets elected and they're meeting members of the legislature and members of Congress for the first time after they get elected, uh, you know there's a strong learning curve on the people side and understanding and knowing the people side is an important part of the job.